Well, good morning and welcome to church this morning. It's great to be here with you. Um, can I encourage you to stand as those who are in the building and welcome to those who are online. My name's Marcus and I'm the curate here at Christ Church. And we're going to start this morning, this second Sunday of Advent, by lighting our Advent candle and we pray upon that. So maybe we might just want to bow our heads, close our eyes, and we just listen to the words as we light our second candle. Lord Jesus, light of the world. The prophet said you would bring peace and save your people in trouble. Give peace in our hearts at Christmas and show all the world God's love. Amen. We're going to take some time to worship this morning and we're going to be continuing looking at as in this Advent season. We're thinking about how we share our story. Part of Jesus' story is that we share ours. But let's start by worshiping together. Oh 
beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. Beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus, what a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You were the Word. You were the Word at the beginning. One with God.
nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus for to us a child is born to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. That is the name that we worship. That is the name that we proclaim his goodness this morning. Just in that quiet, maybe just ponder those names of Jesus. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And we know those other names, the Son of God, the Son of Man. We know who he is. We've seen him at work in our lives. We've seen him throughout scripture and throughout eternity. And just in your hearts, just give him thanks. Thanks for all that he has done. Thanks that he has walked with you every step of the way. Thanks that now and forever his kingdom reigns. And Lord God, we pray that this, this Advent season, this Christmas time, Lord, that we will focus in on you. Lord, help us not to be consumed by festivities for events, by consumer consumerism, Lord, but that we will focus in on you. That true gift of Christmas. The true reason for the season. Lord, and that you might help us in doing so to proclaim who you are. To proclaim your name. The name above all names. The powerful name. The beautiful name that we've sung about this morning. So, Lord God, will you come and fill us up with your spirit that we might go out into the world 
and show off Jesus in all that we do and all that we say and all that we are for his name and for his glory. Amen. I can encourage you to take a seat and Rachel's going to come and give us our reading. The reading is in two parts this morning. The first reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. And the second reading is from Luke 8, verses 36 to 39. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured Then all of the people of the region of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them because they were overcome with fear. So he got into a boat and left. The man from whom the demon had gone out begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over the town how much Jesus had done for him. The reason why I didn't uh, have the whole of that story, as many of you will know, is that with the demons they go into the pigs and I wasn't starting a campaign for pork or Christmas rather than turkey. But anyway, let's just pray for a moment. Father, we thank you so much for your word. And as we explore your word, we thank you for the story and the unique stories that we have. And we ask, Lord, that you will just help us to know our story and to share our story even more these days. In your name. Amen. Well, each and every one of us has our own story. There's a moment that you were born, and there's a moment that you have lived, whether it was through schooling, whether it's through a workplace, possibly with having a family, there are moments that you have your own story. And whether you like it or not, as you live your story, you impact people around you. You share your story with others. Just think how often a child, when they're little, picks up mannerisms from their mum or dad or their guardians, their primary carers. And so often you just see how they've mimicked it. But we pick things up from one another. We get to share our story. And over the last few weeks, we've been looking at the gift of Christmas and the gift of Jesus And it's the most amazing story of how God himself became one of us in Jesus, being born as a baby, living amongst us, then dying in our place and rising to new life. It's an amazing story. But our story is also caught up in God's story. We're not just called to share God's story We're called to share our own stories of what God has done in and through us. For God made you unique. And if there was only you, Jesus would have still come and died for you. Why? Because you're worth it. God loves you and he's for you. And God thinks that your story is uniquely precious. But in today's world, it is sometimes harder to live our story. It may be that you think of Christmas's past and how much the world has changed. Or in this last week, where less people believe in Christianity. You know, it just means we've got a better job to do of sharing the gospel. The whole thing is that in this way of life, it can be disorientating to live our stories. We've been through COVID. We've been through big changes. 
And the whole point of what Peter is writing here in this letter is so that we might live our story well and we might share our story well. Why? Because as we share our story, we point to Jesus. Paul himself had said, follow me as I follow Christ. Why? Because he wanted to imitate and learn and allow God to work in and through him. You're here in person or online because God is already at work in your life. There's a reason why you've tuned in or turned up today. Because God wants to share his story with you and God wants to help you live well and to share your story with the world around. You might be saying, John, I don't have a story to share. I want to say each and every one of us has a story to share. Each and every one of us has things that we can communicate about how God has made us and about how he saved us and the hope that we have. So how do we share our story well? Well, if you actually had a look at 1 Peter 3 a little bit earlier than our reading, we see that Peter encourages us to be compassionate and humble. In today's day and age, where everybody has an opinion on social media and has so much angst and hides behind anonymity, Peter encourages us to be different. He says, be compassionate, be humble, be caring, be looking out for one another. Live your life in such a way that there is something different about you. Paul himself talks about how our lives can be a fragrance. People pick up upon it. People pick up upon the smell. People pick up upon how we live. Peter encourages us, first of all, be compassionate and be humble. Be gentle. Be caring. There's an amazing piece here that he carries on here in this letter Peter actually quotes Psalm 34. He goes back right to the time of David when David needed to live well and live differently. And it's about leaning in. Just listen to these verses from verse 10. Whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. The eyes of the Lord are upon you, and his ears are attentive to you. Why? Because you're righteous. Why? Because of what Jesus has done for you. He's made you right with God. So Jesus is attentive to you. He's attentive to your prayers. He's interested in your story and he's interested in strengthening you to lean in and to live well. And it's here in these two things. In verse 10, keep your tongue from evil, your lips from deceitful speech. Let your conversations be flavoured with salt. Yeah, sure, we don't get it right all the time. But the point is, are you leaning in and trying? Are you changing and communicating in a way that people are blessed by an encounter with you at work this time tomorrow morning or in school? Are you leaning in and being honest, having integrity in the workplace? People see it and people notice it and people ask questions about it. But even more importantly in verse 11, they must seek peace and pursue it. In today's world, full of angst and worry, full of easy to anger, people who seek peace, who seek reconciliation, who seek that calmness, people who by their very nature are able to have an inner peace. You know, Jesus himself said, my peace I leave with you, it's a peace that the world does not give. Being able to be peaceful in the midst of an operation, being peaceful in the midst of an illness, being peaceful in the midst of stress and strife. There is an inner peace that the Lord actually promises. And we're called to lean in because people see us living differently. It's not that we don't get stressed. Boy, do we all sometimes do. But it's to know God's peace in the middle. And people notice 
and we need to seek it. So living well to share our story means seeking peace, being compassionate, thinking about our words, being humble, all of those pieces. And then in verse 15 from our reading from 1 Peter 3, it says this, but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. In some versions, it's set apart Christ as Lord. It's that first thing, the first call on our lives is the person of Jesus. Are we putting him first and allowing everything else to flow from that place or not? Are we allowing him to be Lord of our lives? We sing King of Kings, Lord of Lords. We sing Emmanuel, God, with us. Are we allowing him to take his rightful place in our hearts? You see, that's what Peter knew. He knew the change and he says, to live well, put Jesus first in your heart. Set him apart. Don't put anything else before or above him. Set apart Jesus as Lord. And then Peter carries on, always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Again, what you share, being gentle, valuing the other person, valuing their story and who they are, valuing them, being kind, being gentle in the way that you say things. But here, always be prepared. I wonder if I was to say to you, turn to your neighbor at home, turn to a friend and say for 30 seconds why you're a Christian, some of you would be able to do that but some of you might not. But 1 Peter encourages us to always be ready, to be prepared, to know what we might say in that split second, in that moment where someone says, what do you think? What do you believe? Are you willing to take the opportunity? You might only get a 30 seconds at a water cooler to do it, But why don't you think about what you might share? What part of your life where God has made the biggest difference? Sure, you might get a five-minute conversation another time or a whole longer piece, but are you ready to share a small bit about your story of something that God has done? Because there's something about being prepared and there's something about people asking Because if we truly live differently, there will truly be opportunities where people ask us, why? Why do you live differently? Why do you not do X? Why do you do Z? They will be looking and watching. And we cannot but help being seen in that way. And so are you prepared? And in today's world, with the uncertainty of so much of the last few years and the uncertainty and worry of cost of living and of so many different other things coming up, of uncertainty, the world needs this. It needs hope. Not a vague, ethereal hope that you can, like, slip through your fingers, but a solid, rooted hope in Jesus, in the person of a God who loves us and who's for us and is alongside us, a person who knows us, a person who is for us no matter what. Always be prepared to give a reason for the hope that you have. Always be prepared. You see, that's the whole point of this story in Luke that we had today. This man was demon-possessed, and all of a sudden he encountered Jesus and was made whole. And the people were afraid. Why? Because they saw the power of God and they saw something different in this man's life. And what did this man want to do? In a very lovely way, he wanted to just go away and be with Jesus. He wanted to follow the disciples and go and be with them. And the reality is for us, post-Pentecost, Jesus is with us by his Spirit. But in those moments, Jesus had chosen to be born and be amongst us. And so to be with Jesus would have meant traveling in the boat with Jesus. And Jesus said this really simply, return home and tell how much God has done for you. Verse 38 though, he begged Jesus to go with him, but Jesus sent him away. Go and tell how much God has done for you. 
So the man went away and told all over the town how much Jesus has done for him. I wonder, have you taken the opportunity to tell your family and friends about how much Jesus has done for you? Have you ever taken the opportunity to tell a work colleague about how much Jesus has done for you? Have you ever seen that encounter that suddenly says, why do you believe? Have you taken the opportunity to share your story? Because your story is valuable and your story is precious. It is precious to God and precious to you. Have you taken those opportunities to share your story? I came to faith on a Pathfinder camp when I was 13 years old. My mum had sent me on this outward bound place and uh, I enjoyed all that kind of stuff of climbing and canoeing and getting out and about in the big wide open. And it was a camp where they talked about Jesus and it's there that I first encountered Jesus. I went to that camp and that place, why? Because earlier on, about a year before, my brother had nearly died. And my mum and my grandparents had prayed with him in the hospital. And he was healed. And my mum came back to faith and she wanted me to know what the story of faith was. She still prays for us all here now this morning. My mum wanted me to know that. That's part of my story of coming to faith. When I went to Durham, every Monday afternoon, a guy called Ian used to read the Bible and teach me how to read the Bible and pray every Monday afternoon. He wanted me to know God's story so well that actually it could be a part of who I am that I would share it. And when I stand and preach and think, I go back to texts that I was taught how to read because Ian bothered to value me. He wanted to share his story and his life with me. It was a year later, and it was in my second year at uni, that I was in the east end of London working for Youth for Christ. And there was this time where I knew God was going to meet me on the day they were commissioning. And I just had this sense all day. And you see, I'd had this real big question in the back of my mind. I understood if I'd been forgiven, but what happens if I do something wrong again? And in that evening, bearing in mind I'm a front row rugby player, they had this place where everybody was being prayed for. And I went, everybody avoids me to pray for me. And so I stood there. And there was a couple of people having an encounter with God where they fell over. And I went, I don't do that either. And so I was standing there going, okay, right, no one's going to pray for me. This is all right. I'm going to go home in a little bit. And actually someone then prayed for me. And I had an encounter with God, and I saw a picture of Jesus, and I knew I was forgiven past, present, and future. It's because of those two events that when I teach and I preach and I share my life, I want to always root people in the word, but in the reality and the power and the presence of God who transforms and changes lives and gives us a new start day in, day out, whether we muck it up again or not, day in, day out. God is for you. He's for your story. When Heather and I were first married, we were in our flat in Radlett. And one night, I'd been away for three days of selection for Church of England ministry. If that's about to drain you, I don't know what else will. And yet, at two o'clock in the morning, ning, ning, smoke alarm went off. TV was smouldering in the corner. I said to Heather, go grab a tea towel, fill it with water so I could throw it from a distance. I didn't particularly want to electrocute myself. I was that alert, only just. And as she went into the kitchen, the TV burst totally in flames and collapsed in front of me. She ran the fire brigade. I went up and down the next two floors with the three flats on each floor, knocking on the doors to get people out. We were then standing outside, and the light went on in the top flat. And it was this small guy who was a Chinese artist. And I went back up through the stairwell, seeing that far in front of my face. And as I helped him down, then out, I came out the flats. And I'd been taking in so much smoke, I ended up in Watford General Hospital. Middle of the night, disorientated on oxygen. You know, the next few days, the church was so kind. They gave us somewhere to live. People loaned us sofas. People loaned us clothes even, because we didn't have anything. The church was supportive and kind. 
God's people were supportive and kind. That's why it is so brilliant that so many of you support so many of our CAP clients and others. Where people help people quietly move homes. Where people make dinners for people. Where people repair people's houses. Where people fix things or are just kind and caring. It is so important because it's part of my story and it's part of us as a church's story. You know, we are the people of God and we share a story. We are held in the palms of God with one another as a gift to one another of our stories for one another with Jesus in the center. That's what's in our picture which publicizes all our Christmas services. It's the amazing gift of God to us and the gift to each other. That image tells a story. This building tells a story of a people of God who are willing to risk it all to punch a wall through and make it open. Why? So that people can be invited into God's story. God's story impacts us so that we might share that story wherever we are in the places he's put us. Christmas is the most amazing opportunity for us to invite people into Jesus' story. And the best way to invite people into Jesus' story is by living his story. This is my 28th Christmas working for a church. And the one thing that has brought more people into an encounter with Jesus than anything else over all that time is people sharing their story and saying, would you like to know? Or taking the opportunity and that moment when someone says, why do you believe? And so they've invited them. There's so many services and opportunities here, and there's Alpha in January. Be thinking, because if you ask God, all of a sudden, you might find that he gives you those opportunities to share your faith and your story, because your story already speaks. That's why I'm saying be prepared. The Advent Liturgy is all about waking up and being prepared to the work of God around us, and a world that needs hope more than anything else. But do it with graciousness, with gentleness, with compassion, with sharing. Live your story and be willing to share your story. That's what God is wanting us to do. Jesus is interested in your story. Your story becomes a part of God's story. Your story lives as a witness to Jesus in this world. The Holy Spirit is with you, strengthening you. The Acts even talks about you being given the words to say in whatever situation. There is nothing to fear. It is everything to be hopeful for. Be willing to share Jesus and always share Jesus and the hope that you have. Always be willing to share your story. And so I want us just to pause for a moment this morning. I'd love you just to close your eyes. And if you're at home, I'd love you just to pause or just close your eyes if it's appropriate. If you're driving, please don't. But, you know, just take a moment to rest with the Lord. And I want you to, first of all, just think. Allow the Lord to even to bring you to mind a moment of your story where God has met with you. And if you don't feel you've ever met with God before, the fact that you're here means that God's actually meeting with you. And I want you just to thank him for it. And then I'd love it for you to continue just to think about your story. What of that moment or another moment might you share? If someone said, why are you hopeful today? Why are you peaceful? Why do you lean in whereas everything around you seems like you shouldn't? Why do you trust God even in the midst of it? And if it's that actually you're in such a hard place at the moment that you don't know the answer to that question, why don't you ask God to reach his hand in and hold your hand in there? For this is a God moment and a God encounter. And that moment can become part of your story to share. That in the highest of highs and lowest of lows, the Lord meets you. And then I invite you, just where you are, why don't you just open your hands? It's just a sign of openness. Jesus gave his life for you. And our response is because we know whose we are, to give our lives back to him. 
And so, Father, with hands open, we offer you our stories. We thank you that in you all is forgiven and all is redeemed. We thank you that you change and transform us. Will you fill us with your spirit? Will you help us to know our hope? And will you provide us with opportunities this week to be able to share you and to share that hope and to share the gift of Christmas? Holy Spirit, we ask you again to meet with us and to fill our stories with your presence that our lives may be a signpost to you and our lives might share your story. And I invite you, just while you rest in this space with the Lord, the band's going to come and we're just going to continue in worship. But think of those moments in your story. Allow the Lord to meet with you and allow the Lord to speak through you. You 
Lord, we just pray that you would stir in us a real passion for your story, for the goodness that you have done for us, Lord, that you would stir in our hearts an excitement for the things that you've done in our lives. Would you help us to remember what those things are? Help us to remember the small moments or the significant moments, Lord, where you have changed our lives. And Lord, as we come to you in prayer now, we just, we're just going to share with you in our, in our hearts how this morning's word has made us feel, Lord. We're going to tell you if it's made us feel excited or if it's made us feel daunted, Lord, because we're speaking to you. And Lord, we just want to pray for anybody that feels unworthy to share their story. Pray that they would feel encouraged this morning. Pray that you would draw near to them and give them a fresh encounter with you. Would you help us all to spend more time with you, that that would stir our enthusiasm for you, Lord, and that that would pour out into our lives and into the way that we talk and we share with other people. And Lord, we pray for the Christmas that is coming, Lord. We pray that you would be working in the hearts of people all around the world. We thank you that it's your spirit that draws people to you. And we just pray that there would be a refreshed wave of your spirit across the land. Pray that people would encounter you in their homes, as well as when they come out to services, Lord. And would you help us to just set the way for you? Lord, we want to be instruments in that. We want to be a part of seeing people come to know you, of seeing people saved. What a joyful Christmas that would be, Lord, if we knew more people in our lives that were coming to you. We pray that you would draw us to somebody this Christmas. Maybe it's not our best friend. Maybe it's somebody random that we bump into. Would you just stir in us something that we can't resist to share with them a little bit of you? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your good news. And thank you for everything that we know you're going to accomplish with it. In Jesus' name, amen. We draw our prayers together by praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. John. Thank you, mate. Uh, this Wednesday, we are spending a day in prayer and fasting for all our services, for this church, for the school, and for many people to come to know Jesus this Christmas. We know for some of you, Christmas is an easier time, and for some, it's a harder time. But behind everything we do here is prayer. And Jesus said, when you pray, when you give, when you fast. And so this Wednesday is an opportunity for us to be praying and fasting for our services and for those encounters with Jesus. For our friends and this community and the communities of which we're a part during the whole of the week to come to know Jesus and then we're also praying for the opportunities that people have to connect. We have many schools coming in for different services or we're in schools. But here in the building, next Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock is our family carol service. So please do come and have fun as a family in the carols. At 7 o'clock is our 7 service and they've got fire pits outside to so pray it doesn't rain. And they're doing carols by the fireside. 
And then the week after, at 6.30, we have our carols by candlelight service here. And then on Christmas Eve, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, we have our children's service and that children's special. So please do feel free to be coming to that as well. And then at 11 o'clock on Christmas Eve, we have the quiet communion leading into midnight. The opportunity to pause and rest and just to receive Jesus born in our hearts again. And then Christmas morning, we come together with communion at 10 o'clock to celebrate together. And uh, just so everybody knows, on the 1st of January, the Sunday after Christmas, it's one service at 10 o'clock. So if you come here at 9, you'll be too early. If you come here at 10.30, it will have already started. So the 1st of January is at 10 o'clock. Everything else that you need, including the details of join in and other things, are all on the website. Please do feel free to take a flyer if you want, if that will help you to share the gift of Christmas to invite someone. They're there at the back or they're there online. But let us now continue in our worship this morning. Let's just stand.
Thank you so much for joining with us here this morning. And if you'd like to find out more about our ministries, please do go to our website, www.christchurchware.co.uk or do check out our social media. And so let's spend a few moments just continuing to receive the Lord's blessing as we open our hands as a sign of openness. And so may you know God's peace May you know his strength, may you know his love, his hope, his joy as you journey through into this week. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you, remain with you and all whom you love. And may it flow from you wherever you are this week. Amen. so loved that he gave his son to lay down his life for the sake of us he bore the weight of our sin and shame with a cry he said it is finished Christ the Shout for his fame and renown. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord.